anything crazy. The next one is Descartes' rule of signs. So what Descartes' rule of signs tells you is Descartes' rule of signs is going to tell you how many real positive, how many real negative, and how many complex zeros you have. Because remember, we can have zeros that are complex, right? That just means they're not x-intercepts, correct? Remember they have i's and stuff with them? Now in this example, we know, in this example, we know that there are three real solutions, correct? So we know there's no complex. But let me show you how we can use Descartes' rule of signs to show that. So what you're going to do for Descartes' rule of signs is you're going to take f of x and you're going to find, or y, whatever, you're going to find all the sign changes of between each and every term. The number of sign changes is the number of positive real zeros minus an even number. So let's count how many sign changes we have. 1, 2. Does everybody see that? Yes? So what you do is you take that number and you subtract an even number. So it's 2 or 0 positive real zeros. So to find the positive real zeros, all you do is take the polynomial and count the sign changes. Then you subtract an even number from how many sign changes there are. 2 is an even number. So 2 minus 2 is 0. So you have two possibilities. Then to find the negative real zeros, I should use f of x. Because what you're going to do is you're going to plug in f of negative x. So we do negative x cubed plus negative x squared minus 10 times negative x plus 8. Do you guys get a 20 or 25? 25. It's early release. 930, you're right. OK, perfect. Whew, all right, we got time. So does everybody see what I did? Does everybody see what I did here? No. no. All I did was I replaced x with negative x. That's all I did. Well, you make all the negatives. All the x is negative. Instead of a positive x, it's now a negative x. However, we need to simplify this. So any negative number raised to the odd power is always going to be negative. So negative x cubed is negative x cubed. Any negative number raised to an even power is positive. So negative x squared is positive x squared. Negative x times negative 10 is positive 10x, and then plus 8. Please let me know, because we have some time, if that explanation does not make sense. Yes? That's all you do to find the number of positive real zeros is you just take what the, I'm changing this to a function. It's not an equation. I'm just going to use this as a function. All you do is you just take the number of sign changes. To find the number of negative, you have to plug in f of negative x and simplify it. Okay, so the green negative mixed with x is not. No, that just represents are you finding positive or are you finding negative? So now let's count the number of sign changes. We have one sign change, right? So the answer for the number of negative ones, negative zeros, is 1. Can we subtract an even number from 1 and still have like a, an actual positive number? No, so it's just 1. You can't subtract an even number from 1 and still have a positive number. So it's just 1 negative real zeros. Yes? Questions? OK, so now what we're going to do is my favorite little box. So I told you you could have positive, positive real. You could have negative real. And then you could have complex. Correct? Those are the three types of zeros. You can have real. They're either real or they're imaginary, right? They're either real or complex. But if they're real, we found out they could either be positive 
or they be negative, right? Guys, look it. Can your can your real zeros be positive or negative? Yes, we already know what the answer is. But let's pretend we didn't know what the answer is. All you need to do is do this information. So for that looks like red. So for number of real, how many did I say there was? Either two or zero, correct? Okay. So there's either two or zero. Then how many negative did I say there were? One. I forgot to add total. Now, based on the degree of this polynomial, how many zeros are there, real or complex? How many zeros are there? Guys, degree 3 gives us how many zeros? 3. So by using the Cartes rule of signs, I was able to determine there's either 2 or 0 positive real zeros based on the sign change of the polynomial. Is everybody OK with that? No? Yes? Then I found the negative sign changes by doing f of negative x. Plugged in negative x, simplified, I found one sign change. That tells me the number of negative real zeros. So now, what if my question I ask you is, how many complex zeros are there? Yes, Ryan? Well, there's actually an option. If I have two real and one negative, I can only have three zeros. So how many complex do I have? Zero. zero. But what if I had zero real and one negative? Then how many complex would I have to have? Two. And remember, guys, remember conjugates always, or imaginary numbers always come in pairs, right? Plus or minus i. They're always going to be plus or minus i. So what that tells you is that complex numbers are always going to be in forms of even numbers. They're either going to be 0, 2, 4, 6. You're never going to have an odd number of complex numbers. So there's either 2 or 0 real, no, real zeros, 1 or 1 negative zeros, 0 or 2 complex zeros, but they're always going to be 3. Now, does that make sense? Because if you guys look at your answer, does my answer satisfy the Descartes' rule?